Today, we're going to be, we're going, to be going over responsive web design. This is lesson 11, which is the last lesson of Codivate's web development course. So what is responsive web design? Responsive web design is all about using HTML and CSS to automatically resize, hide, shrink, or enlarge a website to make it look good on all devices, which include desktops, tablets, and phones, and pretty much all devices out there. We can test responsivity by making our own by making our browsers smaller or bigger, and we can also use our developer tools to check the different possible browser sizes in order to render um, accessible and well-designed websites for everyone. So this is all about um, adapting our website so that all different devices can access our website and it looks good on all different devices. So let's look at the current responsiveness of our website. So we can clearly see that um, when our browser becomes more like a mobile screen size, it may not look like what we wanted to. As you can see, the nav bar when we kind of have our normal uh, uh, desktop or computer, it's pretty normal. But then our navbar, when we have like a mobile navbar, uh, or when we're using like a phone or a smaller screen size, it starts to get cut off, and we don't really want that. Um, as you can see, the hobby section is also a little bit messed up, and it doesn't look nice in general. You can see that the text is really like squeezed in. So we can um, add responsivity um, and things called media queries in order to. Um, adapt our website to all different devices and so it'll look nice on all different devices so so adding responsiveness so we already set the viewport of our page by doing uh, meta name equals viewport content width equals device width initial scale equals 1.0 which will provide the browser with instructions on how to control the dimensions of the page and the scaling so it's going to be initial scale 1.0 which is pretty much the normal like set scale um, or this zoom scale, um, and we can set, so first what we should do is set our image to have a max width of 100%. What that will do is that when, uh, the browser will get smaller and smaller, um, since this is set to max width of 100%, um, this allows the image to get smaller with the, the browser, um, so when the browser gets smaller, the image also gets smaller instead of maintaining its same size. Um, and yeah, the image can now scale down, but it'll never be bigger than its original size. So that's good. That's what we want. So resizing text. So what if we want to make our text smaller when we have a smaller screen size? So we can use the VW, which stands for viewport width, causing the text to shrink with the browser window. So adding font size to um, VW um, would allow the font the font size to shrink down every time we make our browser smaller or like have a smaller screen size. Media queries. So in addition to resizing images and text, we can use media queries to create different styles for different websites. First, we can start off with the line at media screen and max width is 900 pixels. This specifies that we're changing the CSS properties when the maximum width of our screen is 900 pixels shown here. This is called a breakpoint. So over here, we say the word max width, or the, we use the keywords max width to indicate that we're making, um, we're adding changes or adding a breakpoint when the screen size gets a lot smaller. So when the maximum width is 900 pixels. But what if we want to say that um, for all the bigger devices, um, we want to have a breakpoint. So like, let's say 1200 pixels. Then we would add a min width is 1200 pixels for bigger screen sizes. But since this is a media queries for smaller screen size, because we want to change, um, we want to change the way our nav bar looks. We want to change the way our hobby section looks. Um, when the screen is smaller, we're going to use max width 900 pixels. So what, whatever you put here really depends on what you want or what breakpoints you want to set. Instead of having all the navigation links next to each other so that you would have to hor scroll horizontally to access them, we want them to display in a column whenever the browser gets smaller. So by adding flex direction column, that's automatically going to set all the nav links like underneath each other. Um, 
that's why it's ca called column. This is going to be a row and this is going to be a column because they're all sitting next to each other. We're also going to add margin zero and padding zero because we've added some extra margin and padding here and we don't really want that. So it would look really like long uh, if we did do that. And um, we set a margin of 10 px for the, each link. And that's just so that um, between each link, there's a little bit of space. So the most important part in adding respons uh, responsiveness to our website is the flex, flex direction column. Everything else you can kind of figure out, you can adjust to your liking, the margin, the padding, um, maybe if you want different transitions to happen when you make your screen smaller, that really is up to you. But um, adding flex direction column is really important because you want the user to be able to see all the nav links and not have to scroll sideways to access the nav links. Responsive navbar. So on most web pages, you'll see a hamburger, hamburger menu icon, which is pretty much three horizontal bars. Um, but that's going to require some JavaScript, which we'll definitely cover in the JS Bootcamp course, which you can sign up in the spring. Um, so the hover property, so you can do that if you'd like, or you can research it on your own, which is also good, but it's out of the scope of this course, and you can sign up for our JS course to learn about that. The hover property um, is going to make the links look like they're overlapping, so um, let's reduce the, bu the button's padding. So we, add, we added a hover transition, if you'd remember, that when you hover over it, it would pretty much like give an outline of what the button looks like. We need to eliminate that, so when we hover over it, um, it doesn't, it, it's not going to have too much padding. So we can um, change the margin and padding again. Uh, this is up to you, but um, a lot of the things we're going to do now is just to, like experimental, and you're just going to have to find what suits your navbar. As you can see, the hobby section um, of our website seems to squeeze the content together, right? So we have to add media queries to make the page into one column. So instead of, um, if we go back a few slides, so instead of having this whole section like next to each other, we just want to put it underneath um, instead of like squeezing it all in. So what we can do, um, we can make, we can add responsiveness so that everything can be visible in one column. Uh, so what you would do is that you would add, you would add the same property that we did before. So you would add flex direction column to your container element and that's gonna put everything underneath. And yeah, so when the browser becomes more like a mobile screen size, you can pretty much use our flex direction column property, which is cr like pretty crucial in web design um, to make everything into like one column. So it'll all fit instead of just like having a row and then everything squeezed together. So we're, we have some exercises for you. Um, go practice. Um, so we can have an animal section, pretty much just repeat the same process with the hobby section, uh, and add media queries, use Google fonts, practice the things we practiced in previous lessons. Um, here are some more exercises and a challenge problem. Try to figure out how to do the hamburger menu if you know how to, if you know JavaScript. Um, but otherwise, um, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, you've officially completed the JavaScript, the Cotivate, um, web development course, and that covers all the major CSS and HTML fundamentals you'll need for front-end web development. Um, now that you know front-end web development, I'm going to recommend the next step, which is JavaScript. And JavaScript allows you to create dynamically updated content, control multimedia, animate images, and so much more. So sign up for Cotivate's JavaScript course right here in the link below. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. If you have any questions, please email team at cotivate.org. Um, ask in the Discord server, ask our tutors, um, ask any directors, and thank you so much for listening.